It's a satirical comedy show which has been going now for, I think, about five years thereabouts, five, six years. And it grew out of a previous show called The Headlines Again, which was done in a sort of a previous era of Manx Radio when you were still in nappies or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but it was a long time ago now when Roy McMillan was uh, here working at the station. And that used to be a similar idea. It was satirical. There was a team of us who would get together once or twice a month, come up with material. Roy would pull it all together. And then that was actually presented in a live scenario in a pub down at the Trafalgar pub, no longer there now, sadly, at the bottom of Douglas Head. And there would be three or four people at microphones and an audience there and this would be presented. Roy would put it all together into a form, a script as it were, and it would be recorded live with a live audience to get live response. And that ran for several years and then, as is always the case, Roy moved on and times moved on and programme control has changed and that was dropped and I think the idea was always to bring something back again with a comedy element but that sat, as a lot of things do, bubbling away for a long time And then eventually, I think when uh, Alex Brindley uh, came in, he said, we ought to get some comedy back again. You know, what about doing something else? And so we came up with this concept of I am one, which is the postcode of Manx Radio. And that's how it started out. You must be proud of this. I mean, it's been nominated for an Aries Award. And if we look through some of the nominations here, there are some pretty big heavyweights in this list as well. Yes, uh, indeed. In fact, it was nominated last year, which was fantastic. So it's two years on the trot. So we're very pleased. We put it in last year. And again, we were up against Steve Coogan and Frank Skinner and several BBC productions, which you're guessing might have slightly more of a budget than we have here at Max Radio. I don't know. And certainly some of the names seem to be vaguely better known than uh, those those here. So it was a it was great honour, really, to be nominated there. And you really felt you were up with the big boys and batting against the heavyweights. I think that's the nature of the ARI is that it will, it encompasses national stations like the BBC. So you see a lot of BBC entries, but equally smaller stations as well from Scotland or Ireland or around the British Isles. And I'm happy to say Manx Radio is there representing uh, the Isle of Man as well. So uh, we stand as good a chance, I suppose, as anyone else to get in there. So maybe second time lucky, fingers crossed. They have the awards ceremony in May, I believe, May the 7th, I think, from memory. Uh, And certainly we went down last year. So last year I went down and met up with uh, uh, Alex Bell, uh, formerly, of course, of Manx Radio, and then the BBC was then working down in London with a uh, for the radio station down in London for the BBC and we met up there because he'd been involved in some of the writing process and yes we had a fine old time lots of Prosecco lots of uh, star spotting and then they have an awards ceremony there hosted by Ryland last year where they read out a bit like the it's they always call it the Oscars of the radio industry which might be an overstatement I don't know but yes it's all very lots of glam lots of red carpet lots of Prosecco and uh, Ryland there dressed up presenting it and you have the nominations and then you have the Someone comes in to do the, and the winner is, and so on. I think there's a second place as well. Sadly, we didn't get, we didn't uh, pick up any gongs last year, but as it's always pointed out, it's, it, they say you should be regarded, you know, you, you should be quite chuffed with yourself just to get a nomination out of the, uh, the standard of entries and the number of entries which come into the Arias from all around the British Isles. So lots of Prosecco is definitely up your street then. <laughs> I do. I'd, try, I'd probably rather just have a nice white wine than Prosecco, to be honest with you. But I suppose Prosecco is relatively cheap and cheerful and bubbly, of course. Everyone likes bubbles, don't they, at these sort of do's. The episode that's been nominated is the live version, uh, A New Hope, that happens at the Peel Centenary Centre. Can we expect to see another one happening this year? Oh, well, hopefully. I mean, at the end of the day, these things are, as you can imagine, a lot of work and that it is um, at the idea of staging it live was something new and that's why we put it in this year because we thought the previous year we'd put in a, a studio-based one and then we've done two or three now, I think, live versions down at the Centenary Centre which have done very well and seem to be lapped up by the public, which is lovely. They seem to enjoy it. It gets Manx Radio's name out there, so it's lovely to do that. It's There's a lot of work involved, as you can imagine, in getting all the material together putting it into some sort of form where it actually flows together on the stage and makes sense to the audience. Uh, and then, of course, it was recorded, which what we put in was recorded by Manx Radio's engineers. It was a team effort. It's not just one person, is it? As they all say in these things, it's a team effort in many ways, I think, uh, if, if we get anywhere or even for the nomination. It's an overall team effort, I think, of putting the whole evening together, getting it recorded, broadcasting it, and uh, and hopefully, who knows, we might, we might get a gong on that yet. But as for another one, fingers crossed we will do another one. I think we are... 
if we can get the eyes get the ideas down get a bit of writing done once the thing starts to take shape people start to get a little excited about it and then yeah the adrenaline flows and it gets going but it's just getting the thing off the ground is usually the hardest but i think it is the 60th anniversary year of Manx Radio, so there could be a clue in there for something to do. How long does it take you to write it from start to finish? I mean, the the, the one which was at the Pale Centenary Centre last year, how long did that take from the initial idea all the way to the point of where it's actually on stage? Because even on the night, there were still little tweaks happening. Mm, I think that's always the way. And, and I don't know is the short answer. I mean, you're talking, you know, tens of hours. I don't know as go as far as hundreds of hours, but certainly in the long tens of hours of thought. I try to remember to jot all the ideas down, even if they're just an idea, a line, a thought, a joke, a gag, something, and then see if you can build on it. And I've got to, again, I've got a, a list now for the next one of possibles, and I keep a sort of running list. The thing with these sort of shows, I think, because they are taking the proverbial Michael out of, and we like to say they're taking the Michael out of Manx politics, Manx radio and Manx life is the way I brand it. So it's generally having a poke at all things Manx, including ourselves, the station, our our people, what we actually do. Manx politics, of course, features heavily because that was part and parcel of it in, in order to to actually poke fun and have a bit of fun with uh, the numerous vagaries of uh, and weird and wonderful life, which is Manx politics. So Terrific to have a fun at that and uh, always a healthy sign of a good democracy, they say, don't they? You can poke fun at the uh, politicians and they can take it. But yeah, obviously, some things are massive, aren't they, for a short time? And yet, two or three months later, no one's no one remembers them. And then you get other things, maybe like, I don't know, the Steam Packet or the Manxman or these sort of stories. They just run for years, don't they? I can't remember a time when there wasn't usually some sort of problem with the boat coming in or the boat's not going or it's too rough or, again, the airport's been in very much in the news that way as well. So some of these things run for years. Other things, you sometimes jot ideas down and you think, oh, this is really good. But the time it actually comes to air or the time you're putting it to stage... It's gone, you know, and you think, it's, it's, this is just old hat now. People won't remember it. And so sadly, you might have a really good idea or a great idea for a gag or a new story or a sketch or something, but you just think it's too old now. So what you're asking it. for is a, a monthly I Am One. <laughs> well, you know, we did used to do the um, the headlines again, was monthly. Um, we did, but it was only, we did 15 minutes once a month. Uh, and there was a team of... They weren't even all people who were, there were several of us in the station. And then there were another two or three people who were involved sort of, you know, in the, in the Manx circuit. But they were they were writers or poets or people that Roy knew with artistic bents who liked this sort of thing. And we'd just get together in the pub. And everyone had very slightly different ideas of, you know, what was funny and what wasn't. And some of these would be battered round. Roy would be the circus master and say, right, all right, H, you can write, write something on that. I'll take a look at that. And right, Roy, yeah, you take a look at this. Yeah, but then we'll have, a, we'll have a think about that, see if you can do something on that. And then he would, he was the, like I said, the ringmaster. He would pull it all together and it was his call what made the cut, what didn't. So sometimes you'd write stuff and it wouldn't be used and maybe used the next time or sometimes it was just a case if there wasn't time. And again, if you look at any of these, I'm sure the radio shows on Radio 4 in particular have a, a good strand of comedy and have for a long time. You listen sometimes to the writing team. There might be 10 or 15 names there. I mean, an awful lot. It's amazing how much material it takes to actually make a program and make it relevant and particularly make it funny. It's a lot of thought and a lot of writing and stuff gets, you know, as you say, tweaked and jettisoned and such like. And here we don't normally have the luxury of large team so it usually ends up being you know two or three people at most so the last year or two it's been mostly me on the writing and anyone else who's willing to come in with ideas more than welcome and then you know we put everything into the pot and see what we can come up with thank you for making it to the end of the little manx radio newscast you are obviously someone with exquisite taste may i politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of manx radio podcasts at your favorite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear here on your smartphone. Thank you.